So I'm wondering how it sounds. To me, it sounds in the headphones, it sounds a little blocky. Well, I, I think you guys had to return them. Hey, welcome <laughs> to Guard Fork Radio. Thanks for downloading the show. This is Eric. I'm your host. It's eclectic DIY, kind of whatever we think is interesting. We hope you think it's interesting. I also have a YouTube channel by the same name. Today we're going to talk about refurbished headphones, uh, a new MIG welder, and how come other people are better at working on your dog than you are. Right, Rex? Yeah, yeah. So let me tell you about that sometime. Well, we'll talk about today even. How are you, my friend? I'm good. It's uh, 40 degrees outside. It it feels colder than that, though, but that's, I guess that's just me. Yeah, it's 47 here and we're freezing to death. But, you know, this is Virginia Beach. <laughs> we were supposed to have your, uh, be hosting your uh, co-host, uh, Nicole, down here uh, last weekend. But, uh, and I, I don't know what she was going to do down here. She was staying in one of the hotels with a friend and she was going to bring a kid or two. But uh, one of the kids got sick at the last minute, and so they, they canceled, which is good because it was blowing like stink on uh, on Saturday. I mean, oh. just, you know, maybe 40 miles an hour uh, right off the water. Uh, you know, it's good if you want a, a facial that includes a sandblasting. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it wasn't... Uh, <laughs> It wasn't ideal, so it was good she got to can or could cancel, and uh, maybe we'll see her again soon. On the GRT, the Great Road Trip, as she calls it. Yeah, uh, you know, you guys did a great job last week. Uh, she she is really a jewel. Uh, what about me? About who? Me. Oh yeah, yeah, you're okay too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you're talking about getting refunds from companies. And one of the things that uh, I wanted to add, uh, you guys did great with it, is be exceedingly nice to the little people. Yes. It is amazing. I, I compliment them. I talk about their day. Uh, they have much more power than you think they do. And, uh, you know, uh, and particularly when you're dealing with uh, people who may be in overseas call centers and whatnot, Americans have a really bad reputation for being rude. Yes. A and if you can be, um, you know, civil, and, and, you know, sometimes they can't do anything to help you. Right. But, but just be really pleasant to them um, and, uh, and you know, write down their name and use it a couple of times and say, yeah, well, listen, I really appreciate your help anyway. And, and uh, because one, it's just a decent thing to do. I mean, they're, yeah. they, they got a job, but there are people who have much more power in a, uh, in a, uh, a, a telephone call, a complaint or a, a service call of some sort. Uh, and you're not going to bully your way to it. Uh, you have to um, you have to sugar your way to it, or in our case, honey your way to it. Yeah, maple syrup your way to it. Uh, don't 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 be rude. It, it doesn't pay, and uh, and all it does is um, uh, you know rage. And that's one of the things we're discovering now: uh, the psychology of uh, of uh, people interaction. Rage is an addictive feeling. And yeah, I see that the, on the highway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, whether it's online or it's in political matters or it's uh, on the highway, uh, rage is addictive. And for some reason, it, a lot of people feel good when they do it. Uh, they may feel rotten afterwards, but in the moment, that rage, uh, just letting loose, uh, is addictive. And you need to tamp that down a little bit because um, you know you're still going to get uh, catch more flies with honey than you are with vinegar, right? That's why I'm nice to you, Rick. Ah, I see. Yeah, I don't I rage you, at you. you. No, but you, all you good love, points. You know, yeah. I've always re I realize that they're they're in a call center. It, it you know, and they're I just try and make their day better. Even if I'm not trying to get a refund, I'm just trying to find some information or, you know, change the address on our subscription or something. But, and then at the end of the call, they always say, uh, is there anything else I can do for you today? And I say, I'd love two medium burritos and a Diet Coke. 
<laughs> then, then there's silence, and then usually they start laughing, or they say, "I'd love a burrito too." <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, it, it's a you know, what you're doing is a human endeavor, and uh, you've got to treat people like humans, or they're not going to respond to you at all. Um, yeah, or we're doomed. You know. Yeah. Somebody else. Uh, I, I said, um, what was it? I said. Uh, respond, don't react. Yep. Uh, that's that's a, a basic tenet of a, of a Stoic philosophy. And uh, one of the listeners really reacted to that. He loved it. But the other thing is, uh, respond with the end in mind, the end goal. If you get offended, uh, you've blown whatever your end goal is. And, and sometimes it's just better to, uh, you know, be a little humble and uh, if somebody is a, a little rude or something, if you're if they you need to get past them to get to your end goal, you need to keep in mind what your end goal is, yes, and not and not get caught up in uh, in personalizing things. So, uh, I've yeah. learned to get better at that. There's a uh, there's a couple of goals I've had for like ten or twenty years, and I'm still working on them. <laughs> <laughs> and the people uh, between me and the goal. I'm like, okay, they are who they are, you know, just let it roll. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm reading a book now. Um, I'm always reading a book. But Jeffrey Rosen, he's director of the National Constitution Center, has written a book. I can't, I don't have it on the tip of my tongue, but it's, uh, it just came out in February. And it's about the founding fathers and the pursuit of happiness. And what it really goes back to is we define happiness much differently than they did. We de define happiness as hedonistic. Uh, I like this. This makes me feel good. I want that. I, you know, uh, I have a right, you know, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and it's temporary. It's in the moment. And generally it doesn't make you feel good in the end. Anyway, the framers were actually using uh, Cicero's, uh, Tusculan disputations, uh, a lot of them referenced it. I mean, even um, uh, uh, John Adams' wife, uh, Dolly, or yeah, what, Abigail Adams, uh, was quoting Tusculan's dis disputations to John Quincy Adam uh, when he was in school, uh, and she was writing him letters about it. And it's about eudaimonia. Uh, sounds like a disease, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, eudaimonia is... Uh, delayed gratification, uh, being the best person you can be. Uh, uh, you, it, you do, you personally uh, exhibit eudaimonia when you work on a project for, you know, like this, uh, this filing cabinet, turning it into an evaporator. Uh, you're, you're working on it. You're buying equipment. You're, you're making it the very best you can be. It's a long drawn out process. Uh, you're, Sounds like to me you're going to miss uh, maple season, maple syrup season, the way you're working. <laughs> but in the end, it's tremendously satisfying. That's what education is. It's a, it's a eudaimonic um, endeavor. It takes a long time to get through your education, but if you're doing it right, uh, you benefit from it for the rest of your life. It makes you a better person. And that's when they said the pursuit of happiness, that's what they meant. The individual becoming as much of a, um, uh, as good of a person as you can possibly be to lead the fullest life you can possibly live and not be caught on the, the, uh, hedonic treadmill of, uh, right. you know, uh, something makes you feel good. Well then after a while it stops making you feel good. So you got to do more of it and do more of it and do more of it. Um, you know, that's, that's not the pursuit of happiness. The pursuit of happiness is to be the very best person and the very best citizen that you can possibly be. I'm working on it. You're a good citizen I'm doing too, the best Rick. I can. <laughs> I do the best I can. But uh, I've been in a lot of classes lately um, on Zoom calls. It's been Zoom classes. And um, uh, it's wonderful to be in classes with people who are not reactive. They yep. are... Yeah, they they respond, they think, they uh, uh, have informed opinions. It's it's great. Wow, that was deep. 
We were just going to reflect on the previous podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. we both um, had to recently take our pets to the vet, and you texted me with an interesting observation. Oh, yeah. Now, it sounds silly to take your dog to the vet to have their nails trimmed. But my two dogs, and Bhutan particularly, the little red one, uh, she trusts me to do anything but her nails. And she, I even put her in one of those hangers. You know, you uh, uh, has four holes for the leg, and you wrap it yep. around the dog, and then you hang the dog up so that they can't do too much. Uh, she bites the bejesus out of me uh, when I'm trying to do her nails, and she's kicking and screaming and squirming, which I'm willing to do. I'm not going to hurt her, really, uh, or punish her. And so she can get away with anything. I take her to the vet for 25 bucks. Um, they take her in the back. I hear screaming, but yeah. <laughs> uh, she, you know, she comes out with her nails clipped, and uh, it, it's one of the best investments. But she doesn't throw nearly the fit with them that she does with me because she, they're strangers. And she doesn't really know what they're going to do, what they're capable of doing to her. And so she is more restrained. And so sometimes it's just um, for those things you can afford to do, um, just, you know, take it to the vet or have a professional do them. You know, dog groomers do them. Uh, but uh, my, my vet does, does them for 25 bucks a piece. And it is worth the peace of mind. And also, uh, I don't hear the clicking on the wood floors. Ah. Yeah, we had a similar experience. By the way, if... Um... I found more and more that regular veterinary practices are making appointments to do regular checkups and are less and less inclined to take someone at the last minute when you have not a huge emergency, you know, like you need to go to the emergency hospital for, but you know, you're like one of our pups, uh, their cornea was scratched. And so we weren't able to get an appointment at the regular vet. And I said to the camera operator, we were in the car because we realized it was a problem, uh, just Google um, urgent care veterinarian Brooklyn and up came this, uh, it's a it's an umbrella group called Bond Vet, B-O-N-D Vet, Vet. I think they named it after Bond Street. But um, we were able to make an appointment online and we went there and it was fantastic. And the follow-up visit was fantastic so we're going to for our brooklyn appointments we're just going to switch to there they they do regular care and urgent care and my labradors are pretty chill but trying to get drops into their eyes is a challenge and the veterinarian literally just snuck up behind spiker because spiker scratched her cornea and just went boop boop and dropped in her eye and she didn't even know what was coming so i've learned that you come from behind but it was just an, just an interesting observation of how, th because the dog doesn't really, uh, the, the dog, Spike doesn't think she's going to get a treat from this lady. She's just like, oh, there's a, there's a person behind me, you know? Yeah. The, the flattering thing was uh, there was a, the, do the veterinary doctor, a vet tech who was super, really knowledgeable, and a vet tech uh, assistant or in training, I guess. And we were wrapping up, and the vet tech said, um, would you mind, uh, because your dogs are so calm, that our vet tech uh, in training could practice on your dogs? And I'm like, sure. You know, so she was uh, listening to their heartbeat and stuff with the stethoscope. And uh -huh. so they were kind of, uh, it was great because they just stand there. They're like, okay, I'm and their tail wags. And they're like, all right, I, someone's kind of hugging me, you know. So mm -hmm. that was very flattering that actually our dogs were, calm enough that they would want to practice on them. So I like that. That was good. Yeah. You know, the same thing happened to me uh, last year. Uh, my vet, we've been going to this vet for over 20 years. And uh, he says, you know, I have a, a veterinary student here uh, doing an internship. Can she examine your dogs? And I said, oh, yeah, sure. And, you know, she comes in, she does all this stuff. And then uh, we, uh, Bhutan has a little bit of a, a high liver elevation. Uh -huh. And so uh, she had to go report on that uh, to me. And then there was a, a point, and I said, well, now what about this? And uh, Bhutan, her short ribs, the floating ribs at the very back, 
are deformed. They're kind of clubbed. Uh huh. And uh, it's just a birth defect. Uh, she was crowded in the womb or something. Uh, she also has kind of a crooked jaw when tooth sticks out. But you know, I, I took her the veterinarian in training's hands, and I, I said, you know, feel this spot right here on her side. I said, I'm pretty sure that's cancer. You know, that, there's something really wrong here. And and we had already, you know, the vet and I had already talked about year, years ago what what the problem was or what was going on, and she had to reason her way through what what it was, and and actually. Uh, yeah, she had tremendous information. It's just getting that information to the front of your mind. Huh. And uh, it, it was really uh, fun working with her. Wow. You're like the trainer. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, there are people uh, who make a living uh, in medical school being the patients. Yes. Yeah, I've heard about that. And uh, some of the stuff seems a little too personal for me, uh, but uh, just to uh, you know, have students uh, practice taking your, your history and, um, and doing basic examinations and whatnot, I'm okay with that. All right, can I talk about my new headphones? Uh, I'll, yes, tell me about your new headphones. So I broke my very, very nice microphone. And, you know, I always see these podcasts. They show the video of the podcast, and they have these, like, bajillion-dollar microphones. And I bought not a – it's like a $120 microphone. To me, that's a lot of money. Um, mm-hmm. And I think I dropped it, basically. But – and to his credit, uh, Garden Fork Will, who is now uh, – owns a fireworks company, by the way, in addition to the Bear Paw Resort, he was like, I'll send you a new one. I was like, I already, I already ordered it. But in the meantime, and as a backup, I wanted a USB – headset with a microphone. So I went on to, you know, these various podcast uh, guys that blog about stuff and they suggest different different ones. And the Jabra um, line of USB headsets is highly rated. So you know, I went to Amazon and they typed in this, it's the Jabra 2 Evolve 40. And it's, it's like $120. <laughs> and I was like, oh. oh. <laughs> but... In a, and I don't know, somewhere else on the page, they said, uh, you could also check out the refurbished version of this, and it was 60 bucks. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, I love refurbished. My laptop, all my Macintosh stuff I buy from the refurbished store on the Apple website. Your watch? Um, the, the watches, the sound bar, my iPhone is refurbished. I actually posted about this to the patrons earlier in the week. But there, I think for like this Jabra that came, the headset, it still had those kind of clear pieces of plastic around a lot of the uh, edges. So, it, you know, mm-hmm. cause it, when you're new, you got to take all the plastic off it. It still had that on there. So this is telling me maybe it had a mal, uh, the, the plastic was misformed in a way or something, but it didn't meet their quality control. And so they sell them by the pallet to a company that, you know, sells them on Amazon or eBay or something. So I think these are brand new, like even the cable to the USB, you know, the USB cable was still shrouded in that clear plastic. And there's no way if you're refurbishing them, you're going to get that cable back into that plastic, you know? Right. So Amazon has a whole refurbished section. I'll link to it in the show notes here. So check it out. I got my sound bar from Walmart refurbished and it's great. You know, it's like, it was half the price. So I love that kind of thing. So I'm wondering how it sounds to me. It sounds in the headphones. It sounds a little blocky, but um, I don't know. I'm just getting all used to it here. Well, I I think you're going to have to return them. I think we should have a poll of, uh, of uh, garden fork listeners and say whether or not um, these are good enough. What happens is we, we were playing with this in the beginning uh, before we started, uh, it's very sensitive to placement uh, yep. around your mouth. And while you were talking just now, it buzzed out several times. Oh, wow. Huh. That's too bad. Yeah. So they may not be the uh, the pair for you. Oh, darn. Well, anyway, check out Refurbished on uh, your various sites that you buy things on. And unless, of course, you just want us to have a an inferior podcast. <laughs> With no, inferior I want it to sound. Bit. I want it to sound nice. So yeah, see, it just buzzed out right there. Oh wow! 
I mean, it's it's good enough. We can understand what you're saying, but it it uh, it's not quite right. Oh, bummer. Bummer. All right. Well, Rick and I are going to stick around for the after show if you're just becoming a supporter to pay for my new microphone. <laughs> uh, I work through Patreon for that. I, I post all sorts of stuff. Sometimes I post three times a day. Sometimes I post once. It's behind the scenes stuff. It's my thoughts. I ask for a cup of coffee a month for that. And you also get the after show, which is more of me and Rick uh, having deep thoughts with my buzzy uh, headphone here. So, well, and, and Nicole, she's become a regular guest host and she's really great. Yeah, she's great. Yeah. Very organized. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, unlike, unlike us, we, we don't know exactly um, why she's hanging out with us, actually. No, we don't. Yeah. <laughs> if you have any thoughts on the refurbished headphones and that, uh, or a suggestion of what I should try. Um, oh, you know, there's a, I wonder if I can adjust the input volume. That might be something. I'll have to look at that. Go out and do cool stuff. If you want to, email me. It's radio at gardenfork.tv. We'll see you in the next one. Garden Fork Radio is produced by Garden Fork Media LLC in Brooklyn, New York. Our executive producer is Jimmy Goose. For more information about Jimmy and the custom hollow books he makes, visit hollowbooks.com. The music in the show is licensed from audioblocks.com and uniquetracks.com. Music